All right, here we are back at the workbench from hell with all this spaghetti running all over the place. A couple of quick looks at a four-wheel drive trailblazer actuator. This I have removed from this hole on this, this is the front axle disconnect. This is the actuator for it. Once removed, you see here's a plunger. I've got this all wired up here. I'm just gonna jumper it so it activates. Uh, if I find my right, here we go. When you switch to any four-wheel drive mode, this device, this actuator is going to engage. And it's going to extend this plunger. The plunger extends in order to push down in this hole, which will move a shift fork, coupling two, vari two different gears in here. One from the intermediate shaft coming from the differential, the other side comes through to your CV axle. Pushing this in, the plunger will push this in, and it slides a collar, a shift collar, over those two gears, locking the two together. What I want to show is if I rotate one of these gears a little bit and then try to push this down, you feel some resistance. It hits, it doesn't go the full travel always. There, you heard it click there because it's still lining up. Like there, right there, I can't push it in until I move these gears a little bit. Boom, then it goes in, they're lined up. That's because the gears inside aren't always lined up together and sometimes they're gonna hit. So to compensate for that, this actuator has got a coil spring inside of it. You can just see the glint of metal in there. It's spring-loaded. If you watch, I can compress that spring. Even though the actuator is still in its fully engaged state, I can compress that spring. That way, if the gearing isn't lined up and they're butting up against each other when you shift to a four-wheel drive mode, the actuator is still going to do its business inside, pushing against the other side of that coil spring. The plunger won't go because it's hitting that the gears. Until you get a little bit of motion, the gears line up, then the the spring-loaded thing will force it down the rest of the way, and you're in four-wheel drive. So if I disconnect here, you'll see that plunger. That's back for too high. This is for any four-wheel drive mode, including automatic. So you should hear this noise when you switch out of too high into any four-wheel drive mode. If you're not hearing the noise, you gotta check out your actuator and your wiring. The fuse that supplies power to this actuator is number 51, it's under the back seat. It's called the four-wheel drive fuse. Separately, the controller module, the TCCM, which is out of the picture up here, uh, that one's powered through fuse number eight under the hood, the ATC fuse, automatic transfer case. That powers the TCCM, which is, again, up there out of the picture. And the TCCM supplies the power to this is your shift motor, which does the shifting down under the transfer case. A distinctly different sound, you, uh, which I'm not going to run on here because I need a battery to do that. But this piece is, to, is bolted to the right side of the engine oil pan. So you should hear this sound anytime you shift into or out of two-wheel drive.